All right, two days in a row. Welcome to the Thursday live stream. Yesterday was a little bit different because we checked out a guitar and a lot more people seem to be interested in that, which is customary for YouTube and completely understandable. I did think it did help a few people out. I received a lot of thanks and questions uh, further about ordering from shops in Japan, including other recommendations. So anytime that we could do stuff like that and contribute, I feel like we're doing a pretty good job. Hello, Slacker Deluxe. How's it going? A few other people already in here, and I don't need to ask about if it's working, because clearly it's working. We're going to start this off. I actually, in advance, started a poll. I want a general question. Well, I want a general answer as in a yes or no here for the poll itself, which is about to be posted. But if it does, in the comments, I want to have this a conversation not about one specific piece of gear or whatever, like a new PRS or a new Fender or whatever kind of stuff is released these days. Tell me what guitar or what piece of gear it is for you and what it brings out differently in you. And the topic of today's video obviously is gear that inspires you to play or if gear doesn't mean anything and it just kind of comes out no matter what guitar or amp or pedals that you're using when you're writing. I find this to be very interesting. And this has been on my mind uh, since yesterday when I finished the unboxing stream. I sat and I played Jazzmaster for a while before I started the film because I really just wanted to enjoy the instrument and get a feel for it. And while I was playing it, my, my wife saw the guitar. I showed it to her. And we haven't practiced in uh, a little bit together just because time, schedule, sleep, kid. And she's just like, yeah, we're, we're definitely playing today. And that, that's just always been the case with her because when we met, we started playing on the gold American Vintage 65 Jazz Master. And so whenever she sees a Jazz Master, uh, just wants to play, wants to sing, and it just kind of works for our vibe. So I found it to be extremely strange because she doesn't play guitar. It shouldn't really matter to her. But clearly, it absolutely does. So I know I'm that way with some guitars as well. And it's part of the reason I do, when I was doing YouTube for the first year, really for the first year, and there was a lot of guitars I was getting from Japan, and pretty much at least two or three times a month, I was doing a new guitar demo and review and then selling it. Uh, some guitars, man, really did make me play differently. And I, I, can't, I can't explain it. I really can't explain it, but it's just my own experience. If you guys have any similar experience, if you have a piece of gear, like I said, that means a lot to you, that does inspire you when you do play it uh, more than anything else. Let me know what it is, you know, a little bit of history, and we could talk about stuff like that. And try to not solely focus shiny new objects. I know I say that with the, the Jazz Master, but strange circumstances with that one. Really, really nice guitar, though. They also have Jaguars, mind you. <laughs> okay, so my immediate thing is, the majority of you are saying that it does, but none of you are typing what that gear is. It's 88% to 12%. 88 to 12%. And I think of, last week we were talking about Jeff Beck, and when I think of him, you, you always think of a Strat. Maybe Gary Moore, you think of the Les Paul. And you've seen both of those players play other instruments, but it feels like when they're really at home, with that one guitar, even if it wasn't like a specific one per se, uh, that extra level is kind of achieved. And Greg Cock, who is still with us, fortunately, um, with a Telecaster. I feel like he's a completely, completely next level, even from where he is, player, when he's playing his Telecaster versus when he's just playing any other guitars. Not that, you know, he's not already an amazing player, but I don't know. I just think it's interesting food for thought. You say offsets, Biffs? And you say there are songs in every guitar, axes and elbows. I used to I used to say that to justify trying to keep guitars that I bought to sell. I think I actually verbatim said that in one of the earliest videos I made. Uh, I said I'm like I, I don't want to sell this. It was an Orville Les Paul custom, and I said I don't want to sell this guitar. This, this guitar has got songs in it, and I think within two days of that. I priced it ridiculously on reverb. Well, to my eyes, what I thought was ridiculous, it sold. And I was like, well, um, those songs are hopefully going to come out from somebody else because 
<laughs> they're not they're not coming for me anymore. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, I I I tend to gravitate towards offset guitars, specifically the Jaguar, uh, Jazzmaster to an extent, but definitely the Jaguar and Telecasters the most. I feel like those for me are the ones that bring out the most of my playing, but it's got to be the right one. And it's not a value. It's not a matter of price or brand or anything like that. It's, it's all relative. You find the right one in your hands and none of that, none of that crap matters. I know lots of pros that play out with classic vibes. They, they love the things to death and to perform live and really get into the performance. You have to have a certain level of comfort with your gear and really almost not like a connection connection, but you, you have to, you know, really enjoy playing it and to see those kinds of guitars getting as much time on stage as they do. I think that says something. And I, I don't personally own one of those guitars, but I think that of all the lower value as a lower priced Fender offerings, even though it's a Squire, those are the ones I see more frequently. I don't really see too many newer Mexican production models when I see other people playing or I go out and I play. Very uncommon to see that. It depends on the day as well as the instrument, says Tony. Some days I just feel a particular guitar and then it changes for another day. That's kind of the problem when you have this behind you too. It's almost like there's a guilt thing once you have a few more guitars. Like, I haven't played this one in a little bit. I'm going to pick it up. And maybe you picking that guitar up is like, oh man, I remember why I love this guitar. And you write some cool stuff with it. You have a little span with it, a little fling. And then you move on and do the same thing and it becomes a cyclical thing. I think if you have a great stable of guitars that you're happy with, as long as they're being used and they can continue to give you inspiration, there's no harm in that. Not to me, at least. Usually acoustics for me, Robbo. Really? I can see that. Ovation inspired me just so many tunes. I just wanted to play it all the time. Isn't that great when you get a guitar and it's all you want to play? It's been... I've, I've had... Two of those where I, I had that kid feeling where it really was. I, I didn't want to do anything else. I didn't want to sit and play video games. I didn't want to, you know, you know BS around or, or go out to a bar or anything like that. All, all I wanted to do is just play two specific guitars. Ironically, I own both now. And it's been recent. And it was weird because one of them, you know, not really a surprise here is the, the Momose, the Inca Silver Jaguar style guitar. That's pretty much all I've been playing. So when I when I played the Jazz Master yesterday, I kind of felt bad before I picked it up. I was like, ah, oh, like this thing's got a really tall order to to kind of follow up after being so so in the zone with this guitar and just playing it constantly. I love that guitar. I love love the necks that uh, Yo Momose himself, Mister Momose Yasio Momose makes, and the Jazz Master actually was was really good but we'll see in that tomorrow we'll talk about that later uh okay but if a guitar never gets played it has to go i know i'm actually this is gonna surprise some of you and i, I genuinely mean this i really do because i haven't put it up for sale yet i feel the takashi kato stratocaster is too good to be a tertiary instrument for somebody i feel like that should be somebody's main guitar I love that guitar. I think it's great. But in the hierarchy of things here, I mean, pinky and blue, <laughs> for, for, for lack of actually calling them what my child has named both of those guitars. Well, we're still in the works on the blue one. Those, those are guitars that are just going to primarily have their purpose of being played um, live. I do like playing guitars with poly finishes that are lightweight and that are offsets. doesn't hurt that they're both you know, Japanese, and the necks are fantastic on them and all that fun stuff. Well, the pink ones, mostly Japanese. And other than that, like, the gold Jazz Master is pretty much retired. Uh, it's, the necks warped on it a little bit. I could still play it from here to here, but it's not it, It's not a reliable instrument, and that's a nostalgia guitar. I already talked about that. Uh, the 77 uh, X Robato, which is the blue one, the 335, uh, I... I love that guitar as a sit around on the couch. Dog comes up, kid comes up, bonks into it, whatever. Great. And yeah, that leaves the Kato, the Telecaster, 
which somebody has been hounding me in the Discord. I'll, I'll pay you. You don't have to buy. We'll do no fee payment. We'll do this. We'll do that. I, I think we're a little far. I think we're a little apart here uh, on the price, but I think that guitar is going to be going. And also, somebody from Canada wants the Paul Reed Smith. So I got to email them after this. I saw that email before I opened up. And that leaves the two divisor guitars, the Albatross and the Momose, which are the two I play the most. But enough about me. My Charvel with distortions, coil taps, Floyd, all black. Well, out of 17 guitars, that Mexican-made Charvel inspires me. I bought that drunk on a whim, too. Don't drink anymore, but that was a good drunk buy. I have made several drunk buys, man. I, I, haven't, I haven't drank <laughs> in all those three years, two and a half years. But I used to make some really, really poor decisions. Really poor decisions. I would come home. I was working a corporate job and gigging at the same time. I was working for the cell phone company. Not fun. Not a fun life experience. But I was making good money. And I was still working on uh, songs and playing with my friend Dave. And that's the record that we have the masters done for and we have the artwork done for. I'm literally just waiting for copyright and I could post it. I'm so excited. But in that time, we were, we were massive drunks. We're, we're talking every single day, just getting hammered. I would come home some nights, and this was when Reverb was really good to buy from still because there was, the fees were like nothing, and um, people priced things very well. There was no boom at the time. And I just think, yeah, that looks good. Never played it. No idea what it's going to be like. I like it. Just bought it. It would show up be like, what the hell is this? I didn't order a guitar. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. You're drunk. <laughs> but sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you get lucky with that. Other times, uh, hey, you lose some money. What are you going to do? <laughs> Give me a V Maple Neck Japanese Fender for inspiration. Ah, oh, you want the JV, huh? Good luck with that. Those are really expensive now. There's a guy selling... Uh, there's actually This guy actually has a really cool website. I've never talked about him before. He's an individual guy. He doesn't run a shop. But I think it's Cliff's Guitar World or Cliff's World of Guitars. All he gets are Japanese guitars. Like 99%. And he has a 1982 Fiesta Red ST62... 115 which is the most expensive model like and it's in mint condition and he wants like seven thousand dollars damn damn i'm not paying that but it's like a museum quality piece but you can you can find a lot of st57s that are going to have the v on them stay away from the newer traditionals those won't but the older models from japan uh the st57s you get one with a good V-neck on it, you'll be all right to go. Hey, Jim, happy new year to you and all health above all. Thank you, my friend. Same to all of you, as always. I hope you're all doing well, and I hope that when we do these things, or if you're just watching a video, that it can give you, you know, five, ten minutes of whatever, just kind of peace and taking you away from whatever might be going on because that's what it's, it's all about. Or maybe it inspires you to, to pick up your guitar. Really, that's what I should be more focused on. I'm trying to be more focused on. No, I don't want to end the stream. What are you talking about, YouTube? Stop it. Stop it at once. I wasn't alone at least. No. No. I, f I, I feel most people, once you get a few bucks and alcohol is involved, especially if you're younger. Yeah. I, I, I made a lot of mistakes in my 20s. But I also sold a bunch of guitars that I wish I didn't sell because now they're worth a freaking fortune. But crystal ball, hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? <laughs> Let me see uh, if I have this website, actually. Cliff's World of Guitars. I think that's what it is. I, I saw this on Cliff's Guitar World. Okay, so let's check it out. We'll see what he has. I, I actually found this on a forum, believe it or not. I found it on the Les Paul, My Les Paul forum. Uh, the only place I really go in there is the um, other single cuts because it's Japanese stuff. So, we go here. Yeah, finest vintage Japanese guitars. I see some really good stuff here. Some of these prices, if you're not familiar, you're going to be like, what the hell is he talking about? Like this LS200, Les Paul Reborn, for, for, for almost $20,000. <laughs> I mean to real connoisseurs that is as good as you're gonna get 
That really is. That, that That's right up there. Uh, old breezy sounds, springy sounds. The Tokais are really cool guitars. Uh, you do find, not not everything is super expensive. I remember, I think he has a Tokai, a 1984 Tokai LS50. That's $1,000. But that Greco super real. It, it, it is incredible again. But if we're looking at, I, I want to find the JV. I know he still has it. There's Yeah, there's no way that's sold. Oh, it's perfect. But I will say this. $6,500. It doesn't look like it's been played. No. No potential spam. No. No backplate. Oh, it doesn't have the, the original pots, really. Oh. That's a tough sell. But anyways, I thought that this was a this is a pretty cool. Pretty cool website. If you if you're if you're digging for Japanese stuff, the majority of this is really expensive. Yeah, like this this is a very affordable guitar by comparison. I mean, we're just looking at guitars that were six and twenty thousand dollars. This is nineteen eighty four uh Tokai Love Rock. I think it's a good weight too. Um yeah, eight pounds, four ounces. So it's for for a non chambered Les Paul, pretty good. And the only reason that these LS fifties aren't as expensive uh, they're not one piece bodies. And some people say, oh, that's, that's terrible. And you can't do that. Or the neck angle is a little bit different or this, that, and the other. I, I, I've played LS fifties from, from the eighties that were, that were great players. And, but it, it is what it is. We'll get, we'll get off this website. If you want to check it out, it's Cliff's, uh, guitar world and have at it. Good place to, to think about Japanese stuff. Have you ever played a Fender modern players series guitar? I have played a few of them. Uh, the Mustang was the one I liked out of the ones I played. I liked that one the most. Then again, I'm partial to offsets. I didn't. I did. I did not like the Jaguar because it had no vibrato. But the Mustang I thought was pretty cool. And I remember what was it? The Starcaster and the Coronado. I think were released. And at the time, those Coronados were like five ninety nine. Not like fourteen hundred bucks. They were they were kind of not budgety because at the, even at that time, like ten years ago, six hundred dollars for a Chinese made Fender, uh, that was a tough sell for a lot of people. But yeah, the, the, not a bad line. Mustangs a really fun guitar, but I like I like most Mustangs. I prefer the pawn shop Mustangs. Those are really cool. But yeah, not bad. When I started out, I bought guitars on their looks because I thought that's what I was, what I would look like when I would play. <laughs> oh, you you mean new, the new player series? Oh, I've played tons of those. I would, I, I would, I would, I would, I would disagree. If if you're talking about as in modern as in the production ones that are being made now, the player series, I think they're they're. I'm trying not to swear. We're gonna. I don't want to talk about YouTube stuff because it's it, none of you guys care. But the new list of rules, the new things. I have videos where it's it's like a 20 minute video, and in the middle I said like one bad word that wasn't even like an F word or anything like that, and it's retroactively demonetized. I got to be so careful now on this website. And then they took. The, the, the membership fees went from, I think, 70 or 75% down to 55%. Same thing with Super Chats. Not, not that we, we do Super Chats or stuff like that in here. It's very uncommon. But it's just like, I see them just nickel and diamond, and especially with, with streams and videos. Like, I, I got to be careful of the things I say. I really got to be careful. Oh. oh, when they made them. No, the old ones? Okay, yeah, absolutely. I give you I give you a 100% seal of approval then. The older ones, they were really cheap. They were really cheap, especially used in mint condition, like two, three hundred bucks cheap. That, 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 those times are gone. I keep looking for a Japanese 335, but Greco or Il Orville. Why not Tokai? Why not Tokai? They make some incredible ones. A shop I would like you to check out. I don't think they have any in stock right now. Uh, is Nico Nico Guitars. They get a lot of those in. Another place that gets in the Tokais 
uh, on a semi-regular basis is Kurosawa Gaki. That place is really good. And I know you're going to be like, I don't know how to spell any of those things. So I'm going to go ahead and type them each. So we're going to say Nico, Nico Guitars. That's one. And Kurosawa Gaki. If you want to look at 335s, man. The, or the problem with the Orvilles, because they're licensed by Gibson, they sell for a little bit more than what I would say they're worth. Here, at least. The Tokais and those Grecos. And, and don't write off Yamaha. Do not write off Yamaha if you're looking at vintage Japanese 335 style guitars. Some of those Yamahas will, will put to shame a lot of brands. Super good guitars. Yeah, check those places out though. What's up, Rafa? How's it going? China gave it a bad name, but they were awesome. Well, I mean... Uh, I find so much hypocrisy in this community when it comes to country of origin. I do not want to make the stream about that. But there is just so much hypocrisy. And if you knew how horribly, to this day, the people in Fender Mexico are paid, who work six days a week on the production lines, I think you might look at things a little bit differently. But those are two really good websites to check out. And again, if you have not answered in the poll, let me check on the results of that. Does some gear inspire you more than others? 79% of you say yes. 21% of you say no. I feel like a radio disc jockey. Odd voice. But I, I, I that's right about where I thought it would be at 19 votes. But there are any of you who haven't voted that are viewing because the, the math doesn't add up. Believe it or not, I can do basic math. Please leave me a vote. And if you weren't here earlier and you did vote, tell me what that piece, if you answered yes, tell me what that piece of gear is and why it's special to you and what you love about it. Because I, 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 I like hearing stories about guitars. You know, I think it's awesome. And outside of my real dislike for the way FMIC is run, uh, I really... I really don't like looking at the the fake relic anymore of the Telecaster. It just it just feels so art. I mean, it is artificial. It quite literally is artificial. But every other guitar I have, man, I've I've, I've been the one to do it, and it matters to me. I don't know why, but it does now. So it is what it is. It's the builder and the company, not the country where it's made. Ah, and it also depends on how much you trust said company and who's in charge of the company these days. Because things change over time, as we have seen multiple times. Look at Fender, for example, when they sold the CBS. Uh, things went downhill pretty bad. And honestly, the only reason the Japanese lawsuit guitars became a thing at all was because the quality from Fender and Gibson sucked. There's no other way of saying it. It sucked. A lot of those guitars were terrible in the mid to late 70s, early 80s, with the exception of a few models. They were not very good guitars. So if the Japanese could offer better guitars, better crafted guitars, I mean, granted, in a lot of those guitars' cases, the pickups weren't always um, fantastic. You're still offering it at a cut rate price, and you're, you're smoking it where it matters to me because you can, you can easily fix electronics even if you're just some, some guy at home. That's not a hard thing to do. That's why it happened. And that's why the boom was there. And that's why a lot of those guitars are still sought after. It's pretty cool. Uh, I changed my mind on the no after thinking about it. Ah, there you go. Amps and or loud sounding things seem to be making a difference for me. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm What did I say? Out of all the things I bought last year, Rafa, I got I guess we got some great stuff. It's been a it was a, a great year in that sense. And even before that, I've 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 had a lot of great guitars. That's it. The Tone King. That was the best piece of gear I bought by Miles. Just a little amp. But it makes all the difference in the world. It really does. 
I play that, even at the maxed out five watts, I play that thing and I just, I, I, I go somewhere else. I'm so happy with it. Can it do everything? Could I play um, to, to, to 5,000 people with the token Kremlin in an ideal situation? Uh, it, it could be done, but ideally, I, I wouldn't want to do that. It, does, it, does it switch channels easily? No. No, you need a AB box and a switcher and all that kind of crap. But if I'm just talking about sitting and playing, it don't matter what single coil guitar I plug into that. It sounds freaking awesome. It sounds awesome. So much more important. I think about all the money I spent on pickups for guitars that didn't necessarily need them. Some guitars definitely did. Um, but I saved that money and put it towards getting another great amp. So between the Victory and the Tone King, it's like for clean tones, it's tough to beat. Uh, the Marshall's up and running again, but I, I am going to sell it. And that will be one of the things we hunt down later this year. Used. I'm going to look for a kind of old, dirty, kind of plexi style head. Or maybe something uh, a little more modern. It's all about what's available. Maybe a studio vintage. All right, let me catch up. You guys are talking too fast. Uh, James. Yes. Okay. My point, smaller has to try harder. Well, in theory, they have to try harder. Do they always try harder, though? No. Sometimes they hang their hat on. This is unfortunate, but sometimes they'll hang their hat on. Oh, we are smaller, so you should support us because we are small. And then not put the effort in, and then those companies fizzle out within a year. But they should try harder. Uh, my Fender Modern Player that I added a hip, shot, hip, shot, hip shots are awesome. And added Mother of Pearl gold knobs. Send me a picture of that. That thing sounds freaking gnarly. What finish is that guitar in? If it's a Fender Modern Player, that's got to be the... It's either Daphne or Sonic, right? Blue? <laughs> that thing sounds over the top. Send me, send me a picture of that. I like to see it, Pearl. Fender sucks for real during the 70s. I had a Les Paul Deluxe back then, and it sucked too. Yeah, there were, there were bad guitars. There were a lot of just... Just bad guitars and Stratocasters that were like 10 or 11 pounds. I always thought it was a myth. Until I, I started really going to shops all over the place and I recurring thing. And I'm like, this is, this is not very good. That's why I, it's part of the reason I never really got into vintage guitars. One, because I wasn't playing the good vintage guitars. I was playing poor examples from a poor time frame. And then, the, you know, the Norlin years, not always the, the best with Gibsons. And they were all really expensive. I was like, why, why would I do this? We get some newer stuff or some used stuff. It'd be fine. All right, Rafa. Let's see what we got here. I keep remembering that. Today I felt like selling all the Fenders and Eastmans and get cheap guitars with upgraded pickups and call it a day. I know it is never realistic. It, you know, what you need to do is stand freaking pat. You need to stand pat. If you buy one more thing, it's got to be a great amp. You don't need to buy a $2,000 amp. You don't need to buy a Soldano. You don't need to buy a Two Rock. You need to buy a legitimately good amp. That's that that that's what you're missing here, for sure. Stop flinging the guitars around. Learn the guitars that you have. They're all great guitars. If you want to get rid of one or two of them, by all means, do it. But going from guitar to guitar to guitar to guitar to guitar all the time, I mean, you're just you're just you're giving yourself headaches, you know. And then. You show up to practice like you did. You, you were telling me about the PRS, and it's just like, well, like, like, this isn't going to work at all. And you already had what you needed before that. So you kind of just like, you didn't lose any money, but you lost time. If that makes any sense to you, where that time could have been better spent doing something else. You know what I mean? But as far as purchases go, I mean, you have your Helix, and that's great for live. But the guitars that you do have, and I do know the guitars you have, um, they're great. You have a really nice Eastman semi hollow body. You have an Eastman Les Paul. You have a Japanese uh, traditional. No, no, actually, no, it's actually a hybrid Telecaster with American pickups in it. And you have an American Performer Strat. Bare minimum. I know you have other guitars too, but just between those, you don't need anything else. You just don't. You're good. So I, I'd be focusing on the, the last piece of the puzzle, honestly, is the amp. My go-to inspiration for guitar is an American professional jazz master, but it had to be modded with Kinman pickups and a mastery bridge and vibrato. And you called it a vibrolo. See, you tried to be funny, Tony. You tried to be funny. And I appreciate that you watched the video long enough 
that I said, please don't call it a tremolo. But then you called it a vibrolo. <laughs> You're a funny guy. Do you think the Marshall SV20 does the trick? Um, yeah, absolutely. For me, for if I want a certain sound, will it do the trick for you? I can't answer that. I can't. How far is guitar guitar from you? Get your get your butt in the car. Take your favorite guitar. I, I, don't, you don't even need to tell me which one it is. Out of all the guitars you have, take your favorite one. And go. Try out as many amps. See how loud they'll play it before they kick you out. And then you'll have a real idea. Don't go off of YouTube clips. Don't go off of hearsay on the internet. The best way to shop, especially for amplifiers, I'm going to stand by this. And this is what led me to the Tone King. You go in with a guitar, you know how that guitar is, you know what you can expect from it, and you find an amp that just makes it sing, and you go from there. I played amps that were much more expensive than that Tone King when I bought the Telecaster with it to play. But that amp was just like, dude, that's it. Just buy it, you're good. The rest is history. Uh, I'm using preamp pedals and IRs these days. <laughs> you know, it's really funny. Uh, I don't know if it's because you have investments in your name, but when I first read that real quick, I looked down, I thought you said IRS and I was like, Oh, I don't want to think about my taxes right now. Such a pain in the ass. So much paperwork. When you buy and sell guitars, especially with the new tax laws, I got to have every freaking receipt for every single thing and every single original receipt. It's easy for guitars that I bought to sell like recently to do that because you know, it's all fairly common and fairly accessible via reverb or free to the Japanese sites. A lot of Japanese sites that I purchased from, if you create an account, they'll give you all that stuff. You can just print the receipt right out. You're good to go. Um, but guitars I purchased 10 years ago, gear I purchased, you know, 20 years ago, pedal, stuff like that. How the hell am I supposed to find that receipt? How am I supposed to, 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 to give you that? I can't, I can't do it. Or if I go to a pawn shop, which I sold a bunch of pawn shop guitars this year, I you know, that, that that's cash in hand out the door. Some of these places don't even give you a receipt. That's it. So, yeah. I, I don't know. Don't like taxes. <laughs> As a 62-year-old guitar player of 40 plus years, I was always a Fender and Gibson snob until I recently played a Squire bass and hardly gotten a string string banjo. I don't have a banjo, but that's amazing that you got one and you like it. I know a buddy of mine that transitioned from a guitar player to a banjo player, and he's actually getting more work because of it. Smart move. But that's great to hear, man. You don't need to be... We really are in a great time for gear. You know, and again, in, in, in a different price bracket, I was... I, <laughs> taxes. I, I was looking up what uh, I was paying from uh, Ishibashi in the last year. That momose for $1,200... The fact that you can get a genuine guitar that, in my in my opinion, is better than what the Fender Custom Shop offers for that price. That just says a lot about where we are with the quality of gear that's available to us. You don't need to spend on a historic Gibson. You don't need to spend $6,000 on one of those. You don't need to spend $4,000 on a Fender Custom Shop. Something cool about having it, I guess. And there's always that thing there that intangible some people will swear by it like it's it's just not the real it's just missing something and sometimes i feel like it's so psychological but it is what it is to some people it's worth spending that extra money to have the brand name on the headstock but just as far as a quality standpoint go if we disregard everything i just said about the brands it's 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 so great that at three or four hundred dollars you get a totally specked out harley benton guitar Hundred dollars, you get a cool banjo. You get a gig and guitar from them, a gig of bull guitar from them. Front or two hundred bucks, it's awesome. There's still great values with some of the squires. I mean, you got options. You got options out there. It's a good time. Wiggle stick. <laughs> okay, Greg Cock. Who who was it? You know, you've been here long enough, James. Do you remember Rowan? I don't remember what his his name was on here. But Rowan was like the first person to subscribe to my channel. And he constantly called it the wiggle stick. And I said, you watch too much Greg Cock. 
Okay. No book yet, Jim, but the pedal one, no worries. No, it hasn't been lost. Actually, Ron sent me an email. Let me, Ron Light, Tuesday, 8.55 a.m. Okay, Jim, the wheels are in motion with pedal culture, and he forwarded me this from, ja I'm not going to read her name. That would be really uh, not smart of me. I heard from the UK, and they'll get the copy mailed. It should arrive no later than early next week, hopefully sooner, best from the woman that's actually from the publishing firm. And I have his original request that was sent out to them. Ah, he, Ron, Ron sent it out a few days, about a week after I gave him the info. So that's what it is. But he did do it, so that should that should be good. And I wanted to bring that up because I actually did just read that email. Okay. Anyways, hey Tim from Chicago, you must be freezing your your butt off. Must be freezing your butt off. But I hope you're having a good day. Hey, rock and cheers to us old dudes. Us old dudes, stop it, man. Stop it. Stop it. You guys are old. I'm getting old too, though. And I always I always catch flack because it's some people want, look at me and I look like I'm still like 21. I get it. I totally understand. As a matter of fact. <laughs> I'm so bad at tangenting, but I haven't told anybody this, and I thought it was hilarious. I, the other day, I was my kids and the, we're both in the main room. She's sitting on the couch, and she's just drawing and listening to some uh, record. I think it was actually Jeff Beck. And the doorbell rings. I go and I answer it, and there's a guy. If I told you he was cosplaying as Elvis, you'd believe me. He had the full hair, the glasses. Everything. He's, I, I couldn't. I was like, "What are you doing here?" He's here to pitch some products for the lawn. Makes a cardinal error. Says, "Hey there, is your your dad home? Is there an adult here?" <laughs> I I look around at my kid. My kids just starts laughing, and I'm like, uh, "Nah, man, this this is my this is my house. <laughs> what can I help you out with there?" He's like, "Oh, really?" He's like, "Oh, I, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't imagine." And I was like, "Yeah, man." Almost 40. <laughs> Almost 40. Uh, it's funny. Can't control stuff like that. But the fact that he was dressed up like Elvis, man, I, I should have taken a picture with the guy and posted it. And he actually had his name as uh, Jeff Elvis on the contact info for True Green. We're not buying anything from True Green. Okay. Blackface fenders were everywhere cheap after the Silverface models came out. Everybody wants new now and back then. Go figure. Yeah. Well, that's... It's all cyclical. And guitars that are considered junk right now, in 10 years, some some band will make them famous because they were really cheap right now. And then they'll have a resurgence and they'll get overpriced. <laughs> just, this industry is nuts. True, two hours, 20 minutes. Sounds like a plan. Save up for the gigs and do the trip. Yeah, man, do it. Do it. it and if you're not, and if there's a place, it doesn't need to be guitar, guitar, Rafa. You find a place that has a lot, make sure they have the amps in stock. That is vital. Make sure they have the amps in stock. Go and play as many as you can. And, it, and as I said, you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars. But go a little bit above kind of the baseline here. Like a Blues Junior or something like that is honestly not even that much cheaper than something like the Gremlin. And I like the Gremlin. You might not. But just telling you... The, there's better value out there and stuff like that for just a little bit more. That's the way I would go. Jim, are you going to review a PRS SE594? Uh, if somebody sends me one, sure, but I'm not buying one. It's redundant. I don't need it. That is why you sell on Craigslist. Oh, if they, in San Diego, all I did was sell on Craigslist, baby, because I had a market. I got offset guitars in custom colors from Japan that you couldn't get anywhere else. People would come cash in hand, no negotiating. Here you go. Take your money. Have your guitar for cheap. We're all happy. I'm in Southwest Florida. There is no market for Japanese guitars like that. And when people do message, like, oh, that's, a, that's Japanese. I'll give you a 250 for it. Same guys who list up their Chinese squires for $600 because they put in Mexican pickups. A terrible place here to sell locally. <laughs> it really does. It really does depend on where you live. Uh, Mandel is another thing I've I've tried. That's cool, man. I, I I'd like to try a bunch of different instruments. Hell, I'd like to play a trumpet one day. 
It seems like something fun to do. You've been using the Amp Sim S gear by Scofom. I, I'm, I'm very, very far behind on uh, software emulation simulation IRs. I have a bunch of the neural stuff. I, I, I barely touch it. Nothing wrong with it. I just, I don't know. I, I don't, don't like headphones. Don't like headphones. And at night, uh, I got to play with headphones or sometimes I'd rather just play acoustically. Uh, okay. Here in Canada, used gear is stupid expensive. Oh, I believe it, Tony. I believe it. Even at Long and McQuaid. Hear good things about that place. Long and McQuaid. Hence the push for C. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't even get me started, Alf and Tusks. I just said earlier, YouTube's really, really being strict these days. I ain't touching that one with a 10-foot pole. Any opinions on Black Star amps? I have had a few of them. Uh, I don't like a few things about them. I think they sound pretty good. I don't like that they don't provide schematics. I don't like that you have to bring it to a Black Star dealer. I don't like that the boards on them... Um, if your amp goes out of warranty and it's one of the, the, like a studio series, for example, you bought it new for like 800 bucks or something like that. Actually, I don't know what they sell for new, um, or an HT 40. Cause I know those are popular too. Those are similar in, in, in that sense of how they're built, like buying the, a whole new PCB or replacing the components. Like it's really expensive at that point. To the point where in some instances, you're better off just buying another amp. I don't like throwaway culture. I like things that are repairable. But that being said, um, the Black Stars, the sound-wise, they're pretty good. I gigged with a Studio 10 6L6 for a little while, and I never had any problems with it. But I don't know. I don't like the idea of my amp going the way of my phone. That it becomes obsolete and worthless. And I have to buy a new one in like two or three years. I don't like that at all. That's why we we tried the Tone Master once, never again. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not playing an amp that has a quad core processor. Not for $1,000. That's freaking crazy. Okay. I rent a room so I can't practice with an amp and play mostly acoustically. Do you have any recommendations for quiet practice? Hmm. What amps do you have? Because I could give you a few recommendations, but it's going to vary based on that. Like if you have an amp you really love already, but you just you can't use it because it's it's so loud. Um, I would really consider one of the Tone King attenuators, because what you can do with that is you can uh, have IRs with that in the box, but you get the main feel and tone of the amp, and also you can have a little bit of volume in the room as well. If you didn't want to play with headphones, you could take it down to a very manageable letter. I can I can put this on the second setting lowest, and I don't wake up anybody in this house. And I could play, you know, hard. And I don't bother anybody. The Tone King attenuator is the absolute best in the business. Another good option, this is again, assuming you already have an amp that you really love. Uh, the Wazacraft, the Boss Studio or Tube Amp Expander. Expensive, but these things are all worthwhile. If you have those other things that I mentioned, like amps you really like, gives you a great option to to play at any given hour and not feel like you're you're sacrificing things and it's familiar to you and the feel is there in a lot of these things. And finally, the last one, the most expensive one, the Universal Audio Oxbox. But sans all of those things, if you don't have a great amp that you would want to consider spending something like that on, really... I, I still like the the HX Stomp used. I do. I, I I do. I feel like you can you can get close enough with that, and then not only can you can you get passable sounds, it's just so useful to have around. It could be a, a, a rig by itself. It could be a complementary to your pedal board if you just want to use it for the effects, and it sounds good. Line Six's support is amazing. Yeah, not too many of the digital things that I can really stand behind, but that product, I, I, I definitely can recommend. Okay, I look like I'm 35, but I feel 90. Well, I, I look like I'm 21, 
and I'm almost 40. <laughs> Same thing, right? Okay, waiting for a band popular is the Bacchus. Oh no, I don't want I don't want anybody making Bacchus. I don't want anybody making Bacchus popular. I'm pissed off already, you guys. Do you know how sometimes I, well, you wouldn't know, but I mean, you could see from the the view numbers on the videos. Whenever I used to do a Japanese guitar, perfect example, I did a review of that 77, the Albatross, the Exotic Wood Collection, one-on-one guitar, gorgeous. I think it got 2,000 views, nobody gave a shit. And this is where the trick of YouTube clicks in. And I didn't realize I had done this so well until after the fact that I thought about it. That Momose video has 80,000 views. Not because it's a Momose. Not because there was a, a case that said Momose on the cover. It said, I'm done buying expensive American guitars. It was all in the title. I didn't mean for it to come off like that. I really didn't. But I just did. Because I was thinking to myself, I'm like, why does this video? Like, why is this the popular video? Not that I was like ashamed of it. And I'm very happy because I love that brand. And I just, I got them a ton of exposure to people that have probably never heard of them before. But that's just, that's how YouTube works, man. People click things that have those kinds of type, like really extreme, bold statements to them. So the thing is, I meant it. I mean, the Gibson's already gone. I sold that. And as I discussed, I'm in negotiations with the PRS and the Telecaster. And we'll see what, what goes on after that. Uh, my friend who imports used Fender guitars from Japan gave me a hybrid two-strap forest blue with a custom shot or custom design. I was going to say there's not custom design for 900. Yeah, you can get one of those new for that ship from Kinko's. They, they, they have a bunch. They're good guitars. Uh, I like the hybrid ones better than the hybrid twos. Color choices and electronics wise and the neck too. But the hybrid twos, have, if you like modern guitars, they're, they're, they feel great. I had to look it up. Forest blue is nice. They have a, they have like a Ferrari red. I forget the actual color code for it. They have the forest blue and that Ferrari red were kind of the new colors on the Hybrid 2 line. Very bold. I tried any of your monitors in band practice and really liked it. It's useful in a really big venue. In a smaller venue, I'd never use them. Because I'd rather just have the amp. But you're using digital, so different circumstance. South Florida, <laughs> uh, I, I'll stick to being neither. I'm not buying and selling guitars, I don't think, anymore. Especially because my, my my dumb head told everybody how to get these things cheap. I should have been greedy. I should have been like the people that I vilify. I should have just bought them all and sold them all. We'd, we'd, be, we'd be going off to, to Jimmy's Vintage Music with all the profits. He has a 1962 Stratocaster at a reasonable price. The only thing non-original on it is, obviously, it's a refinish because everything's a refinish these days. And uh, the middle the middle pickup's not original. Everything else is. thought that was incredible. Uh, Jim, interested in a 50th anniversary Lake Placid Blue Jaguar for $1,700? Shoot me pictures of it. Kind of, but not really. That sounds weird to say. If you had gotten me before the Mamos, the Mamose, I would have said, yeah, let's get it done today. But I don't know. I'd have to think about that. But I appreciate the offer. Shoot me an email with more info if you're serious about it. Um, thanks, I appreciate Or oh, oh, man, it just went nuts here. Uh, harmonica and bass, I got two sub $200 guitars. But I want to get one more guitar with the look of an off-cut. You mean an offset, Alan? An off-cut? Or do you mean a single cut? Single cut or offset? If you want one with the look of an offset for 500 pounds sterling? Huh. You know what guitar is actually kind of cool that you can get uh, from stores, even new? You can, you can really barter with them. The Ernie Ball Sterling version the uh, mariposa two humbucker guitar offset design really 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 fun guitar to play comes in dorado pink and or dorado green and a shellish pink and a white cool guitars 
I sold a deluxe reverb tone master solely out of fear that it would die. It probably wouldn't even be a good boat anchor. Well, I mean, my problem with the tone master is not how they sound. It's, it's just the cost for, uh, uh, it's, it's one of these things. Look, look what happens to these things. Yeah. My, my, my kid put a, my little pony sticker on this thing. I'm sorry. But look, my point is these things crack, these things become outdated and I swear they do some crap with the software. Once you hit a certain software update on an old phone, everything just just dies. It can't handle it anymore. You're over. And you gotta buy a new one. It's bad enough I'm doing that with my phone. I'm not doing that with the guitar amp. Ain't no chance in hell I'm doing that with the guitar amp. Not risking it. Thanks, I appreciate the suggestions. What was the last one you said? I missed writing it down. Um, oh man. Uh, the attenuators, the universal audio ox box. That was the last one I said. And I, I actually, that really was the last one I said. My memory's working today. Let me get a sip of water. We're, we're having a fun one today. Time is really flying by. We're doing a lot of questions. I love, I love it when you guys interact like this. We can do more questions. Um, if you're watching, the majority of you, I mean, we're at, we're at a pretty consistent number. So I think that we're going to get all the votes that we're going to get. So I'm just going to call it. This will be the last time I mention this. Uh, three quarters of you do say some some gear inspires you more than others. And that's cool. People want to be fools, attracted by our monkey brains. You know, pe people want to be fooled. People also people also want image. That's so much of this. People people want to have the picture of themselves, right? You, th I, I'm not going to mention the guy's name, but there was a guy I used to play with in San Diego and I didn't, I didn't play with him in the same band, but he, he, he would play, um, at the same nights that I would play and he would only play a Gibson because it said Gibson on the headstock because he would have two people take pictures of him. Just him, not the band. Whenever they played any gig, and it always had to have the headstock in the picture with him playing it. And he tried desperately to get Gibson to notice him. And it was just, it was wild. Like it meant so much to him. And I remember at one point, um, he he was complaining. He's like, the thing keeps going out of tune. I'm like, just buy a telly. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not saying don't 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 ever play your Les Paul again, but. If you, because it, keep in mind here, this was uh, a pretty hard uh, punk slash surf band, because that, that was that was also the kind of band that well, I mean we weren't as hard, but this was just the kind of music we're playing dive bars in, in Southern California, right? So I was just like, you're beating the hell out of this thing, <laughs> like you're not taking great care of your guitars anyway. So it wasn't that kind of guy. Um, I'm like, just buy Telly. I'm like, you you can do it. He's just like, he's like, I can't do that. He's like, I, I he's like, I can't I can't be pictured with one of those. I can only be pictured with what with a Gibson. And I was like, what? And he was dead serious. And every once in a while, I'll go to his Instagram. He's still doing it. So these things do matter to people. One reason or another, man. People are wild. All right. Oh, I'm flying here. Look at Tim Pierce's video titles. They never tell you what the video is about. That's why I don't click them. Uh, I will tell you this about Tim Pierce. He's awesome. He's awesome. He's an amazing guitar player. Seems like one of the nicest people you ever meet. I can't click videos that are such clickbait shit like that. Damn, oh, I, I made it the whole stream without swearing. I was just talking about how I can't do that anymore because YouTube comes back and then they just say, you're banned. Can't make even a, your 30 cents for your stream now. And I say that, I mean, that that's really annoying, but it's true. Anyways, I I, I can't do the clickbait stuff. And obviously, if I'm saying that about Tim and I like Tim, there are, there are some channels you you don't even need to ask. You, you know I'm not clicking their stuff based on I can't do it, man. Just just give me an idea. Give me an idea. Maybe I've you know, I'm pretty straightforward. I feel if I'm gonna hold myself to the same standard. But again, the only time I wasn't straightforward, the video freaking blows up. So who's the idiot? Tim Pierce or me? Me. Because <laughs> I don't want to do that. 
Is this the best? Is this the worst? Does this guitar change everything in the market? Do I ever need another amp? Just bold claims. And I'm, that's not even just specific to Tim. That's that's guitar YouTube. Doesn't matter if you have 10 subscribers or 100,000 subscribers. I feel like that's what everybody who wants to get the big views, that, that that's how they have to go about doing it. Or the, the, the facial reactions. Are, oh, I can't believe. Oh, or, ah. Oh. Guys, I, 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 God bless him. God bless everybody. I was looking at some stuff on Kinko, like and and like Ishibashi, but the two hundred dollars shipping is a bit rough. Oh, if you think the shipping from Kinko is rough, you think the shipping from Kinko is rough? I got quoted at five hundred dollars to have a a three thirty five a Japanese three thirty five. We talked about those earlier. Shit from Ishibashi. I laughed. I cackled at five hundred dollars and two hundred dollars for. Two to three day international shipping, fully insured, is not even that bad anymore. It cost me over a hundred dollars to ship a guitar from Florida to California. It's wild. It might seem expensive, but when you really sit back and look at the bigger picture, it's not that bad. And yeah, I just I, I can't I can't do reverb. I can't do from the the upsellers on reverb. And. Tim's playing is, yeah, Tim's great as far as a player goes. I'm poor until I take my pension. <laughs> there you go. I love the shape of the Mariposa. I was looking at those a while back. They seem pretty nice. Yeah, I demoed one um, right before I moved. I think, I think I had one of the first ones on YouTube, actually. I was just in the right place at the right time. And I managed to get it. And as, as Mr. Investments... <laughs> We're just gonna call him, or we'll call, we'll call him Money Bags. Anybody who's investments in the name, we'll call him Mr. Money Bags. Um, said the, the fret edges were, were a little rough, not nearly as bad as Fender Mexico, but they they were pretty rough. But not stuff that you can't fix. I haven't played many other Sterling guitars other than that, but that stuff's pretty cool. Um, have you ever considered getting into audiophile hi-fi equipment? No, I have not. When I was in school, um. I sat in some mastering suites that were worth more than a lot of houses. And I'm just, I, I didn't own any of that stuff, but like it's just the experience of that and all of that. Like I, I never want to go down that rabbit hole. You think guitars, are, but, well, well, but you, you have a good idea because you brought it up, but people think that guitars are expensive. People think that amps are expensive. <laughs> really high-end audiophile stuff, and then mastering level equipment, the room, everything, the diffusers, the speakers a lot for, dude, no, I'm not, I'm never going down that route, not going to do it. And the main reason I'm not going to do it is because I never want to be an actual mix engineer. If I wanted to do that, I, I, I might go, I might be more serious about that kind of stuff. But everything I do is just get me in the ballpark, get a good recording in, and send it off for somebody else to deal with. Um, any recommendations where to buy Made in Japan, crafted in Japan, left defenders looking for a second Mustang? I saw one at Tsugaki yesterday. It might have already sold. Might have already sold. Uh, I will type in that name real quick. Tsugaki. TC Gaki, check that place out. They get a lot of really good used inventory and the prices aren't abysmal. And I do, yes, see left-handed guitars there. Outside of that, Digimart, Digimart used um, from Japan. But you're, you're going to pay a ton from, from Japan for, for, for a lefty. You know, because and especially the Mustang, because of Cobain, you're, you're paying such a tax on that. Get a Jag, get a Jag, get a Jazzmaster. It's rough. Sounds like Meghan Markle. Uh, I don't wish anybody sounds like that. You're a dad. Curb that. I, I am a dad. I can't believe they did this to this guitar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I think I'm almost caught up. The Robert Baker line is they listened. That's not the Robert Baker line. That's the Fender script line. Because if you pay attention at those product launches... The majority of the people who get those guitars will have 
a very similar thing either in the title, in the thumbnail, or 100% they say it in the video. Next time a big product comes from them that, or not a big product, but you know, maybe a midline, mid-level, uh, higher-end Mexican guitar gets sent out to all the YouTubers, I want you to watch a few of them and listen for it. And you're going to laugh to yourself because you're going to hear it. $500 shipping, no thanks. Yeah, exactly. Um, dang, two or three days shipping. It took like three weeks to get my Mustang from Japan. It was just a guy on reverb. Yeah, that's what it is, man. Every time I order, for, if I order from Kinko's on a Monday, I have it Wednesday or Thursday. And I'm in Florida. So Kyoto to Florida. So long as DHL doesn't have an off day. I mean, they're fast. They're really fast. Not you, the Gibson photo lover. Yeah, that guy's awesome. Brian, you're the man. No, you're the man. Appreciate it. I stopped playing left-handed because I couldn't find any Mustangs or anything left-handed except for overpriced Kurt Cobain stuff. Yeah, it's a rough market to be in. I don't envy anybody that's left-handed and wants to play a Fender Mustang. Don't envy you at all. That's a terrible, terrible, terrible um, conundrum, quagmire, if you will, to, ha to find yourself in. See, that's more dad talk for you, James. I know you know what a quagmire is. Not just a freaking family guy character. I recently picked up a used Fender Japan Big Block Jaguar and feel like that guitar was meant for me, then you're all good. JG66 with the blocks. Very nice. Very nice. Is it candy apple red? I have a feeling it's candy apple red. <laughs> oh, man. Might want to inquire at Southpaw Guitars. They only sell left-handed instruments. That's pretty cool. And there's actually a shop. I don't know if this is the, the same shop or not, but in Florida, there's a shop that only sells left-handed guitars and basses like two hours away from me. I've, I've never needed to take that trip for obvious reasons, but I thought it was cool that they offered that. It's a win in my book. Offering something for part of the community that often gets neglected. He said it on the PRS SEDGT too. Of course he did. I mean, it, God bless the guy. And, and, and another thing I... I he can play, man. Seems like a nice enough guy. He's not he's not ripping anybody off. He's playing the game. He's just playing the game. Good for him. I wish him nothing but success. It is Candy Apple Red. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more than that. But I had a feeling that's what it was. <laughs> All right, you guys, we've gone over an hour today. We got uh, the video for tomorrow, which is our traditional uh, look at the guitar and all that fun stuff. Can't wait. I can't wait to, to play more with this guitar because it makes my wife want to sing. And that was the whole thing of this, in case you weren't here earlier. That jazz master, it pisses me off. I get the momo say. It's freaking amazing. I get the albatross. Freaking amazing. I'm like gushing, like, let's 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 play. Let's play. Nah, 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 nah. Get a jazz master in. And this happens every time I get a jazz master in, mind you. But this one is especially different because it looks just like the other 65. The American vintage one with the bound neck and the block inlays. She's like, let's play now. Like, yeah. Let's final yeah, let's do it. So the jazz masters inspire my wife. If only I loved them as much as Jaguars, I could have a whole room full of custom color Fender Jazz Masters. I don't think she'd say a damn thing about it. I think she'd be happy with that. <laughs> Your brain won't be that sharp once you're 40. Enjoy it while it lasts. Which guitar? I was late to the party. The blue one behind me, next to the pink guitar. You'll be seeing it in all of its glory tomorrow. It'll be fun time. But... I'll answer one last question here. See me as a really nice sunburst jazz mess with black headstock that I'm tempted, but I don't like how heavy they are. Uh, if it doesn't feel right or it doesn't look just right, don't compromise in life. Just wait it out. You'll find exactly what you want. Take it from me, somebody who has tried to compromise many a time. It, 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 it's never a lifer. It's never a lifer when you compromise. Don't waste your own time. Get exactly what you want. Be good from there. Try it first if you can. And Rafa, if you're still watching, I really mean it. And this also applies to all of you. Take your favorite guitar. Go play some amps. The amp will do wonders if you don't already have great amps. It's amazing. You don't need to buy a 40-watt amp, a 20-watt amp. 
Even something like that little five watt amp. Chef's kiss. And on that note, thank you all for watching. I'll be talking to you. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do more streams. Maybe we'll stream twice a week. Who knows? Maybe that'll help the algorithm. But really, I just have more fun streaming than I do kind of um, sometimes filming what I would consider to be mundane things. But it is what it is. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you. Age, oh my God. It's such a terrible way to leave. Age is just a reflection of toxicity in the body. Always the optimist. Always the optimist, my friend. Even if it's true. All right. Thank you, guys. I love you, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Adios. Go play your freaking guitars. Go play your guitars. At once. Good day.